hello everyone. I'd like to welcome my good friend uh, Greg Sullivan to the from the Japanese Center for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, Jay Seti in, in Japan, to the program today. Uh, he's got some fascinating things to talk about. He's a good friend of James Gillian down at the uh, uh, down at his ranch in Southwest Washington in Mount Adams. So, without further ado, Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks, for being here. Thank you, Ted. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, great to spend this uh, amazing weekend with everyone. We've had some awesome speakers and a lot of great information, a lot of great energy. And uh, I'm just happy to have a little bit of time here to share some stuff uh, from, from our work in Japan. And this is officially my second uh, English language lecture ever in the outside of Japan. So uh, I do a lot of events. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, I do a lot of events over there. and. Um, uh, so I had uh, both Ted and James made it over at the end of last year, so that we've uh, started to expand our efforts into more booking events for other people as well. So, um, yeah, I'd just like to share my perspective through, you know, through the lens of ET contact happening um, on the ground in Japan. I've got some video, uh, great video clips for you today, and um, some of them include recent work that uh, where Michi Hayashi was there and uh, Dr. Emoto's son. Um, we did a great water ceremony uh, right outside of Mount Fuji, and so there was some contact that happened there. Um, my story, by the way, is just uh, encapsulated in this book, Past the Contact. Um, we're all uh, CE fivers, um, uh, representing the community of uh, CU5 Contact, which is uh, a protocol started about over 20 years ago by Dr. Stephen Greer. Um, I ha had my first contact experience here in Washington in 2007. Uh, my best friend got married in Portland. And uh, another good friend of ours lived in uh, Washougal, Washington. So I, I was Googling Mel Adams um, uh, and the East City from his house and realized that it was only about an hour and a half away. So on my last night before going back to Japan, I had a life-changing experience. I told my parents it was a religious experience at first, but then I realized it was um, a starseed activation. So I'm an activated starseed, and my mission after that became clear in 2010 when I um, went back to Japan uh, I was kind of sent back to Japan in preparation for two, uh, 311 Fukushima and the work that's uh, happened on the ground before and after that, as far as ET contact and disclosure goes. Um, in, uh, in 3D terms, Japan is obviously uh, has a great, uh, rich cultural history, um, and it's uh, you know they have a, they've been uh, strongly influenced by Western uh, culture and Western society after the uh, end of World War II. But uh, there is a hidden esoteric agenda there that's extremely high level, and um, their uh, role in you know with this whole Fukushima uh, element. Thanks. Thank you. And, um, and uh, the whole Fukushima element and um, the connection to the ascension process um, has been just you know, mind blowing for myself. So, rather than a lot of um, book study and uh, information based um, process, I was thrown into the deep end of the pool uh, personally and through this uh, this work, and um, started Jay Seti here uh, in 2010. The prep work for that began in uh, 2009. And obviously, we're using the name here, uh, Japan Center for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. It's sort of a, a hybrid of you know the work that happens at East SETI Ranch and also uh, Greer, Dr. Greer at C SETI. Um, but we've really kind of um, had we've expanded uh, out of uh, uh, into our own thing from the very beginning. And so um, the reason why I introduced their work is because they um, they uh, Dr. Greer and James Gill and have been doing this. Um, for about 20 years, so uh, for me, it's um, you know, when I got back to Japan in 2010, uh, I realized that um, a short trip to, trip to the bookstore uh, showed me that um, well, up until then, I'd been in the music industry and uh, a recording engineer and an English teacher there, and um, you know, music industry, everything was in real time, parallel to uh, Western, you know. Uh, information, and when I went to the uh, kind of spiritual UFO slash ascension section of the um, bookstore, I realized that there was a bunch of uh, old, you know, email, uh, the um, things like hemi sync or yoga, you know, a lot of spiritual traditions that have been brought into Japan and, and introduced in many different ways. Uh, and then there was ascension information, but at that time the 2012 uh, boom was happening. But there was a huge hole in the UFO or slash ET research, and especially disclosure. Um, so 
uh, I had this, that was sort of a, a big hint to say, well, doing CE5 ties directly into, you know, disclosure projects. So um, imagine for a minute, everyone here, you know, I've kind of really kind of tailored the lecture, and it's an interesting process to, to rearrange my information experience for the English uh, community, but I had to go backwards in, in the Japanese, um, in, the, in my, putting my Japanese program together, because imagine, uh, could you, that if there was a, the level of, you know, even the most basic things we take it for granted, for like a whistleblower accounts and testimony and then the disclosure project itself, the influence that's had has been um, really a, a lot profounder than we might realize. Um, so I was starting from almost square one in that regard. Uh, the UFO scene was 20, 10 to 15 years behind uh, where we are. So um, that was an interesting part of the start of this work. Um, just a quick uh, uh, um, share here. Our information on the web has been almost solely in Japanese, so that's why here I am doing my second English lecture. And as of uh, the earthquake that happened in our area in April, I've been given the go-ahead to not only release more videos online, but um, also to start up uh, more English-based stuff as well. So, uh, if you, um, we've got the mailing list there in the back, and, and you can look up uh, my name in Facebook is Greg Sullivan. Uh, that's my personal page, and I have a J City page, and uh, the videos you can see on uh, J City Japan in uh, YouTube. Here's some stats we've done in five years. This is our sixth year of JSETI. After Fukushima 3.11, uh, March 11th, 2011, I went full time. And my, that was the time of my first book coming out in Japan. My fourth book's coming out next year, uh, next month, excuse me. We've done over 250 contact events in uh, just over five years, starting on my birthday, um, July 19th, 2010. Um, over 50 contact sites across Japan. So right now we're the uh, most active uh, contact outlet in the world. We've got, as C said, he only does um, four trainings a year. So our, our trainings are not a week long, but we've we've gotten to this pointillistic thing where um, you know every week during the summer and re basically year round we've uh, had uh, this human initiated contact event. Um, and I'll show you some of those, some of those experiences on, on video here in a minute. Um, the big book that came out along with the release of uh, Sirius was my first a solo effort called You Two Can Make, Make ET Contact. This was with the sort of um, the, the most cutting edge, um, con you know, underground alternative history conspiracy publisher out there. And um, so this was great timing to help um, <clears throat> ground in the information that was in, for example, the movie Sirius. Uh, for, uh, just a quick question, how many of those, how many of us have seen the uh, Thrive? Could you raise your hand? Okay, and then how many of us have seen Sirius? That was, uh, it came out in 2013. Okay, yeah, that's on Netflix now, so definitely check that out. How many people have seen the 2001 National Press Club Conference Disclosure Project? Whoa, not even half? <laughs> okay, that, that's, definitely highly recommend that as a place to start. Um, what's that? The 2001 Disclosure Project, the National Press Club, that was sort of ground zero as far as um, previous re UFO research and, and the new paradigm that started then, um, as far as whatever, um, whistleblower-based testimony and basically all these people that you see now, uh, uh, including the Mars, you know, uh, group, um, that's all st that all started um, in the 90s, you know. Is that the one where they're actually on the former Yes, the former military, yes. That's right. Okay, so um, this my story. I just I don't have. I won't wait, um, give you a huge uh, background here, but um, I was again prepped. Uh, my time in J City here was precluded by five years of being in Japan um, as an English teacher and again this engin uh, recording engineer doing that when I could, and so I was also in a couple um, brief movies and TV then as a, a foreign kind of talent. Um, uh, this is a famous movie here, um, and then uh, flash forward to last year where. Um, you know, here I'm doing these meditative events and ET contact. So it's, it was a real huge change for me too. Um, and uh, again, this kind of world is like it's experience first, and then you get the information. Uh, this was last year. This this um, this interesting light appeared um, in front of me. Uh, you can see that this 16 pointed light. This um, this is in some sort of ET or like higher dimensional being or. Uh, that's my face, but that's it's in front of my face here. I'm, I'm in the middle of a meditation at an outdoor event in uh, in uh, Okayama Prefecture. So um, you know, I was always interested in you know, uh, alternative history and philosophy, but I'm I'm uh, I'm quite new to the um, UFO world, and um, also I, um, 
that really didn't, I didn't have to rely on a lot of information. This, uh, it was just all, all came very naturally. My Japanese ex um, as well, I never studied Japanese and uh, learned that from what I've now come to recognize as um, basically three past lives and um, uh, that came through a lot of the preparation um, from being a sound engineer, just uh, sharpening listening skills. And I was always interested in uh, the Japanese language from the sound of it. So from, let's say, seeing uh, animation movies in element, uh, junior high school, the, the sound of Japanese was always really caught my uh, attention. Just recently, this year, it's been, this year has been already chock full of um, amazing um, discoveries and, and confirmations. And I've, I've really synchronized with a lot of the other speaker points in the other speakers' presentations as well. Um, we finally got the code name or the project name for our work um, that the ETs uh, have called Sleeping Beauty. It's a beautiful, um, uh, the, the, the contact work in Japan they're calling Sleeping Beauty, or that's the way they look at Japan, because um, it is in a, it's still an isolated island nation, and um, like I said, it has this kind of this deep, uh, a lot of the Japanese writers talk about that too, there's this deep um, potential that's sort of still dormant uh, as far as um, connecting the world into a global um, cosmic consciousness. So I got this message the day we left for uh, New Zealand in March. Um, <clears throat> Um, as I got back to Japan, I immediately um, started two projects, one J-City and another one called Super Logical, which I was really inspired by um, before Guy uh, IMTV uh, was the, um, the, the couple in LA, uh, I forget her name, um, Regina Miller, I think it was. I was watching a lot of the um, CMN, Conscious Media Network uh, 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 videos, and I wanted to make a Japanese version of that. Um, and so I've interviewed Nakamoto Kaoru, and you might have seen her uh, videos online. So she's sort of one of the really most well-known speakers over there. Um, I was thrown into these situations. And then this was the first book I did in 2011 um, during the Fukushima event. We had started it, and then uh, Fukushima happened. And that's, that all ties into how I was kind of moved out of my um, transitional jobs. Um, and uh, uh, then I was, uh, FL, J said he kind of went online full time. Um, some of the topics we in introduced into to Japan as sort of a liaison again uh, from taking from the best and most poignant stuff uh, from Western uh, literature and English language stuff was uh, these, this was our, our J City efforts have been the first official disclosure um, uh, efforts in Japan. Uh, connections to free energy and UFOs, um, ARVs, the man-made UFOs, all these, all these concepts were never there before. Um, cloud ships, chemtrails, uh, the Syrian felines they were mentioned today, and also uh, the people who kind of paved the way for the work we did, what we were doing as uh, you know, CSEN and ESETI. Um, as far as the um, uh, yeah, so again, as I mentioned, we're one of the, we're doing this full time. As far as our main uh, efforts are an overnight workshop. So um, CE five stands for the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, which is uh, when you make benevolent contact. It's not just a sky watch; it's a deep experience in um, uh, space consciousness and uh, also direct sightings of the ships and repeated sightings in one place. So we've had um, world class contact at an extremely high rate of speeds. So I'll show you some of that footage in a minute. And it just really speaks to the purity of the Japanese spirit and also the team um, spirit, the team consciousness uh, uh, that goes with their society, their culture. Um, um, so those coherence, you know, the, the level of coherence is already very high. So um, uh, we've had just the most amazing times uh, out there in the field. Um, so I'm, I'm basically, I brought the CE5 initiative to Japan uh, and then um, you know, I'm also doing at the same time a lot of this uh, the Japanese, you know, people, the Starseed, the Star ET Souls, and that kind of Starseed and Indigo support as far as private sessions go. Um, and uh, translated a lot of uh, James Gilliland's TPR sessions, like over the phone and for different uh, magazine uh, um, magazines and everything. Uh, and then, yeah, we've been really thrown in deep with the media as well. Right from the beginning, uh, I was, you know, on TV in the first year of our uh, efforts and um, have been on, I was on the Oprah Winfrey of Japan. Um, they're really watching, obviously, what we're doing. So as I was consulting with Greer, uh, the Greers and CSETI, basically, um, you know, uh, the folks, the, the powers that were, kind of got hold of what we were going to do and, and have been playing a chess game with us the entire time. So it's, and then at the same time, the ETs have been throwing me into these amazing situations. Um, two years ago, I was on a flight back from Boston and um, landed at Narita and all of a sudden walked out with this enormous cart of uh, clothes that I can't only get at home and, and things like this. And uh, I, I noticed this TV crew standing there. 
And uh, all of a sudden they pointed the camera at me and they were like, why did you come to Japan? And uh, so they, uh, this turned out to be a really popular show. And, um, and I was basically said, the, the ETs were, I had seen a cloud ship as we landed, and they, the, the guys were saying to me, welcome back, get to work. And I thought it was a trap. I honestly thought it was a media trap um, because we had had other kinds of, uh, um, you know, kind of not so nice things happen uh, in our career there. Um, but ended up, we, I got in a taxi and went over to, uh, we, went, we left, the camera crew follows you wherever you're going in this show. Um, they, they welcome foreigners coming in and just kind of, they follow them to live concerts and, you know, a, a traditional events or, you know, the, the, whatever the person is doing. So, uh, we got in a taxi and went about three or four miles from the airport and got out and there was a couple of ships going. I had, I had in my bag a military grade night vision scope, which I didn't know if it was going to be okay to use on national television at that point. But um, I was seeing them with the naked eye and the guys and the crew did as well. So um, they came to one of our events and I was on this show, Why Did You Come to Japan? So that uh, I'll release that again with some English um, narration. So that's been amazing. Uh, these shows, you know, watched by millions. Um, I was on the Oprah Winfrey show in, in precursor to the release of uh, Sirius, the, the equivalent of the Oprah Winfrey show, you know, watched by tens of millions. The entire country uh, was on that. So uh, that, was, that, was been, that was amazing. Um, and then we've, been in, uh, we've gotten involved with the, uh, a lot of the spiritual New Age community that never really touched the ET subject before. So keeping a really high standard of integrity. And I, uh, uh, before I got married last year, this uh, magazine was um, sponsoring my visa. So that was great. And, uh, uh, so I was able to really put in the um, highest quality of, that we could as far as ET info goes. Yeah, and then, um, and then we've gotten involved with uh, doing tours uh, fr from Japan to abroad, like especially right here in Washington, Mount Adams. So I'd come here three times a year, and we also were guided to go to Maui and then uh, New Zealand this year. So I'll show you that video uh, of New Zealand. We're going out of the um, contactee paradigm. There was a, the one big um, UFO um, kind of paradigm that was stuck in Japan there was the Adamski. You know, this was not that popular in America, believe it or not, uh, more so in Europe and, and uh, other countries. But um, this is completely outdated, and, um, and uh, that's why I say this sort of the, this kind of disclosure project that happened in 2001 affected so many other parts of the um, research community. So we're moving, um, and, and it's interesting to see everyone speaking here is, is already on the same page of the uh, you know ascension-based ET contact thing, which is awesome. That's way that's way more closer to the truth than uh, move, you know moving away from the, the 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 one person with a special experience. And it's it's now this is social activism. You know um, anyone can see these ships anytime. Um, you know and so this Starseed mission. Um, I've also developed this a whole ascension and self mastery program, uh, and uh, was guided by uh, another great uh, person here in the states called Lisa Renee. Um, she's not that well known, but um, she's really on the cutting edge of the ascension wave, and, and where she's sort of my one of my star sisters. We're star family, and uh, definitely I'll, at the NPR I recommend a couple of things that I was guided to uh, that have helped me enormously uh, throughout throughout my journey. Um, <coughs> sorry, Joan, back here. I'm going to kind of blast through this, so, we, so I don't want to take the time up. Uh. So I'm a, I've been in the real system. I so I know that um, that phrase was used a minute ago. System busters. I, I'm in the, the I'm in the break the walls down kind of mission here, which is also refer, referred to as a DNA path cutter, and um, that involves clearing ancestral miasm and uh, karmic miasm, as well as. Um, sort of a breaking new ground in, in whatever field or whatever work you're doing uh, as a uh, as a light worker. Um, this is, uh, this is, I'm also taking bits from my uh, Japanese lecture just as it is. The Sea City logo coincidentally has a, a counterpart at the Tenkawa Shrine in um, Nara. This is a really spiritual place and um, and that's the, uh, the, the head priest there. So uh, that's and uh, if anyone hasn't read this book, I would highly recommend it. Dr. Greer's A Hidden Truth Forbidden Knowledge. This is awesome. Uh, and um, even with my own experience and, and getting into C5, um, reading these books, uh, it's like a whole other uh, level of realization as to how, how deep the secrecy has been and how, and how, um, how open the contact is becoming. Um, uh, again, a comment about the... Uh, the media here. This is a site tracking um, views of our site within the first year, and actually the biggest number is a company called Densu. They're, um, uh, they work for the mass uh, media over there, and so they've been tracking kind of what we were doing from the get-go. And and uh, as I've been thrown into these situations, we've had a, a huge backlash to the um, 
serious. Uh, disclosure really first hit big time in 2013. That's why I was brought on TV with the kind of mass media disinfo darlings to, to be put in the same box and, and they were, they've been following what we've been doing the entire time. So, um, and that pr that's proved by this, which shows you that the highest rating of views is by Dentsu, which, which is the, um, the blood and guts of the, 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 ma the mass media mind control system over there. And behind them are CIA and NSA, basically, and the agendas of the CIA, which controls Japan like the 51st state. Um, okay, so then uh, with Sirius here, we've had, uh, there's, I was just in a, another um, tabloid magazine that the ETs said I should be in. Um, uh, and the reason was that, uh, and in that magazine that came out at the end of March, it talked about how in two, in the last year and a half, there was, uh, I'm sorry, in 2015, there was over 20 UFO specials in Japan, um, saying these kind of uh, roundabout things like, uh, there's tons of ships over Japan, and it, it's just this complete um, uh, disinfo smear. They, they appealed to me and, uh, and basically said, are you going to play our game? And I said, no, no effing way. And uh, so then they started to use the other people that they had relied on in the past. So, um, the, you know, we're seeing reruns of the, of the basically the X-Files era um, disinfo program. So what I'm, my point here is that um, the, uh, this issue is, you know, goes over all boundaries of when you start to get into the truth and take power back for ourselves, it goes into the tr um, it goes into the truth so deeply that uh, it, we are affecting these economic systems and media systems directly. So um, I've kind of changed my outlook after this uh, last year. And it, at first, it was like, you know, why can't they just give us a report? You know, this is the the serious appearance in uh, appearance of the film serious in Japan is the biggest uh, thing in, in 10 to 15 years, and we're the ones who, who released it there, so how many interview appeals did I get for uh, explaining the, the movie? Zero. Uh, how many inter interviews, uh, how many appeals did I get to use the Atacama humanoid in a tabloid gossip uh, kind of disinfo way? Uh, over 20. So uh, basically when I started to refuse them, all the guys at the top of the mass media there are connected, so they really kind of just, uh, this, this Sullivan is a, is a uh, uh, a tight, tight ass, you know, here so about this stuff. So he's he's not going to play our game. So they just started to use uh, pictures instead for the internet. So uh, get skirting around the uh, copyright issues. Um, so this is something obviously you'd never see here. So I'm just going to zap it through. Um, we did the official release of, of Sirius in Japan. I did the um, translation and put it together. Put the titles to the film um, myself to release a second version that was only in Japan, along with some bonus footage. Um, and uh, we make a we, we make a little cameo in there um, in the C5 section. Um, I'm also in touch with the crew from the new Greer film coming that's going to be coming out called Un, uh, Unacknowledged, and we're we're actually we've got two uh, ex Japan Air, Def Air Self Defense Force pilots testimonies that I've already given them uh, the footage for, so that's going to be um, coming out later this year. Um, this is that at the coming humanoid, and as I predicted in uh, one of our early. Um, uh, screenings in Osaka, they're going to use this part, this is like the newest, I don't know if you're familiar, but this was the body that was found in Chile. Um, to me, it's, it's really not the most interesting thing in the world, but it is, you know, another approach to the, the ET issue. This, this thing has been debated and everything, so it's not really on the most stable of ground as far as introducing this material, but uh, I, I predicted that they're going to take this and, and spin it, and which exact, that's exactly what they did. So, and they did it to three or four times the amount that I expected they would, which, was, which is why I was kind of uh, upset about it at first. But now, yeah, so um, it's that, I guess they say all publicity is good publicity, but it, it's hard to say. Um, this, these are some of the tabloid, uh, tabloid articles that you found in Japan about this. Um, uh, I went to LA uh, to meet the director and the, the crew there as I negotiate, negotiated this Japan uh, contract. They were, they were never ending light. Um, JD is a producer. He was the son of uh, the drummer from Chicago. So it was cool to see guys uh, in my, I'm in my, I'm 38, so they're, they're in their 30s too. Um, we did over, I think about probably 100 to 150 screenings in, in Japan. So this was like, this was a definitely uh, a big deal. Uh, mostly through people asking us to come and uh, in our own events. This was in Tokyo. I'll just give you a couple snapshots of this. Um, you know, at times there was 200 people at these screenings. Uh, IHE, this is near Nagoya. And so, yeah, Kagoshima, end of the bottom of Kyushu here. I'm using my phone as the remote for the first time here. Uh, Okinawa, you know, obviously a big presence about a military presence there. 
um, and a big uh, consciousness about the expansion of American military bases and everything there in Okinawa. Um, this is Pichan. It's a Earth Keeper crystal from Brazil. Um, so this, we did a, a great event at this guy's place. All you crystal lovers out there, um, Pichan has been giving us, sending us the love. Uh, it's a, over a one-ton uh, Earth Keeper crystal out of Brazil. That's now in Japan. <coughs> So one, one thing the ETs told me as I was about to go back is that there are just so many awesome places to do contact and, and events there, and they were right, um, you know, this, this restaurant here included. Um, so the, uh, the event culture over there is very vibrant and healthy. Um, I did an interview, uh, we did an interview with Ted as well. You see the magazine that's at my foot at the table there called Animone. Ted was in that. And also James got a cover feature in uh, De uh, December. So we've been uh, working with them. Alfred is in that magazine sometimes too. Uh, okay, uh, so and see you by Japan. Uh, let me flip over to a video or two here as we go. Um, yes? That is a good question. It went to number one in the documentary genre on Sirius, from what I hear. So yeah, it's definitely, um, it went viral for sure. Yeah, so. On their website, it says it's been seen 36 million times. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. So I mean, and just that level of integrity and um, Armadeep uh, Kalika did a fantastic job. You know, every time you watch it, you see something new. The, the poetry of his editing is just mind-blowing. So um, I don't know how unacknowledged is going to turn out, but these are all great. And Thrive was excellent because it got together all those topics that seemed disparate but weren't, you know? So um, yeah, this kind of new media is excellent. Um, and the point here is that we all get used to that in the States, but there's a huge um, gap uh, in Japan. They, they do a lot of books real over there very, very quickly. There's a high turnover of, turnover of books being published, but there's not a real online um, uh, media thing happening there. Um, just a quick uh, other thing, by the way, everyone, you can download this. I, I've talked to a couple of people back at the table. The ET contact tool is the CE5 app. So um, yesterday, some people went out and got some shots of the, the, the guardian ships overhead that Scott was talking about here. And um, go out and make your own contact. This is the next. Uh, this is the next phase. You know, we've we've got all the information we need. The only way to overcome the, the, the hurdle of doubt and fear is to do it yourself. So. Um, uh, I'm going to be coaching over a webinar in the, in the near future, but uh, I, was, I went into this at, from zero to 90, and uh, I had had a bunch of personal experiences out after I went to the ranch and had the activation, and then went into teaching it you know, uh, very soon. So um, this app has almost the entire C SETI manual in there, um, and uh, that process was guided by Sherry, uh, who was uh, the C SETI staff who was killed um, by a radionics attack. They gave her skin, they gave them all skin cancer. Sherry is uh, um, was guiding me. Uh, she she did a lot of work on the C SETI manual. So uh, just before I went back to Japan, I got the big manual and all the CDs, and I, I went back to Japan with that and a laser pointer and the two walkie talkies, the basic framework of the C five tools. And uh, then I had Sherry behind me the whole time setting up. Yeah. I just wanted to know because I'm yep. familiar with it. Yes. You'll explain it. Why serious? Why serious? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's. I think the serious is. Um. You know, a lot of the uh, early contactees talked about in inner um, solar system uh, like a Venus and uh, Mars or whatnot. The, the the solar system contacts within the solar system, but. Um, the Sirius tries, ties into the Ascension theme more uh, as far as this galactic consciousness and the energy coming out of the central sun passing through Sirius and then Pleiades, the central sun of Pleiades, Alcyone, and then coming down to the Earth. This is a theme uh, that I'm going to refer to later as well. Okay, yeah. So, um, and also, um, I think in another, with the felines, um, the Sirius is also said to be the home of the Akashic Record, or they, they have a memory banks there. So the Sirius, Syrian consciousness is really big with Greer. Like um, it's it's a it's a, um, a a lot of information, processing a ton of information, and, uh, and he was a doctor and everything, and and sort of that vibe. Um, I was a sound engineer, so I work with, on a huge mixing desk that looks like you're inside of a spaceship. So just that kind of ability. One of the Syrian abilities is to um, uh, compile and um, uh, a lot of data, you know, a lot of um, and stuff like that. Mental a mental facility. Um, the ET contact tool you can download on the I iTunes store and Google Play. It, it's got a lot of instruction in there um, as to trying to make your own uh, contact, uh, you know, even just with one or two people. 
Um, I'll just give a couple little chats here um, of, uh, of our events and then I'll show you some videos. This is me describing the maze, the, the direct contact experience of, of your own, you know, even with all the information out there that's, that's now, you know, um, thank, uh, thank God for the internet, you know, but um, it's, it's a flood of information out there. So this is like the maze of navigating that. And, and I'm saying that the direct experience, this is going to take some time. Um, I said this is going to take a lot of time, it says up there. Uh, but as you have your own experience and make direct contact yourself, it's like this. You know, you just jump, make it like a cycle quantum leap in understanding because you've internalized the knowledge, you know. So the knowledge is, is like a base, a stage that the experience can, can stand on and, and really benefit, uh, benefit everyone. I'm, I'm sorry, this is just right out of the Japanese presentation. Uh, this is just describing the protocol and what CE5 is. Um, you know, there was in uh, Blue Book and Dr. J. Allen Hynek created this close encounters rating system for sightings um, in the 50s and 60s. And there was uh, one uh, class one through four. And CE5 is the uh, first that's um, a bilateral communication with ETI, extraterrestrial intelligence and or their craft. Um, and that uh, CE5 is also, you know, fully human initiated. If you think about all, most contact, whether it's benevolent or invasive up until now, it has been um, random or uh, ET initiated in a lot of ways. That's the way it's shown. Um, Scott was saying he had a beer out there. And, you know, that, uh, the, the contactees and the light workers were followed and, and also um, there was the abduction world as well. But the, the awesome thing about now is that there's so many standing by that all we got to do is, you know, look up in, in a sense. So, I mean, Mount Adams is a power spot that if you go there, you're, you're bound to have an experience. And basically, CE5 is the portable version of that. So, um, you know, if you don't have Mount Adams in your backyard like everyone here in Washington, uh, then you can do it, you know, other places with this protocol. Um, so as I read the manual, the C-City manual, I was like, check. Everything I had experienced personally was just right down the line, um, com completely congruent with my experience. Um, uh, so we've had, a, this is um, the Japan Alps, there's an Orion facility within this mountain. Um, the Orion group, the Benevolent Orions, are, they do a lot of the energy dispensation to, for Earth now. Um, and uh, they're really plugged in at the Mount Adams too. Uh, this, is the, this is one of the three holy mountains of Japan called Standing Mountain, Tateyama. And uh, we've, we've done a lot of work here. This is like the Colorado of Japan. The, the, Al the Japan Alps are here, just gorgeous, look at that. <coughs> And uh, we've had a lot of close um, cl contact on the ground uh, there. This one training, um, you see, on the night of the contact, we had five craft on the edge. This, uh, the mountain, you see the little building on top, that's the peak of Mount Tateyama. We had five craft on the ground as ground lights. And then a sixth craft, an orange light ship, was coming in and out of the peak, or sort of from behind the peak, paying, playing hide and go seek. The next day, the uh, black ops said, we knew where we saw you. You know, that's a big old chemtrail X marking the spot. We were watching. And so we're up at about um, 10,000 10, feet, maybe, uh, here in the uh, sorry, altitude. So I got a really great um, shot of the, another spray, spray plane going right over us here uh, we have on video. Um, so obviously, these things are, are being monitored. but. Um, so that's why in Japan we have a lot of ground lights, these low, the low lights that are below radar. Um, they're actually in the ground and they come out of it. Um, and they're, they're in the sky as well, of course. Yeah, so just these different events, Yamaguchi Prefecture, this is the, um, a really big limestone plateau that's beautiful. Um, a lot of, this is one of our early events, early uh, overnight events. Just, you know, you can see children of, and people of all ages coming there. Uh, at this event, um, a two, a one or two craft were in the woods just right behind the hotel at around 3 or 4 a.m. We saw them at close range. Energy coming down, energy beams. Uh, this is in Fukuoka where I live. Yeah, a lot of orb orbies, yep. So, Uh, this is from Sapporo Station, just right next to the city. And they're in the, the craft flashing from the mountain. We watched this ship for an hour, just drinking a beer at the top of the Sapporo Station Tower. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of contact that happens in between our events, too, of course. A um, lot nice little cloud ship. This is a giant cloud ship right here. See that above the wing? It's not quite so, uh, it's not quite obvious. Then I've had a lot of, uh, this is a, a really important picture. You see this uh, being right behind me in the picture? This, 
we took two shots. Um, this, the one on the right has the face. It looks like Iron Man. This is an Orion being in a contact suit. It's a humanoid, um, human lineage ET. Um, and I could feel his energy. It, it, the Orions are usually 60 beings. And I could feel an enormous pressure in the back of my head. They were with us. And um, we tipped on it at the uh, East City Ranch. And, uh, and we got his name. Um, and uh, he was protecting our event. Uh, you can see, see that? He's got the kind of, it's like this red cover. Yeah, this is a pretty cool shot. Looks like that. <laughs> so, so the uh, Marvel guys were channelers, really. You know, they, they had a lot of this stuff coming through in the 50s already. Uh, okay, so let me go over to... Um, <coughs> Alright, let, um, let me go to... Let me show up in here. The ETs have given me a ton of information about the disinfo. Um, you know, we've completely just um, de deconstructed that. But they love to play both sides, and and so they'll they'll immediately accept a new mem like the ARV, the um, man-made stuff, and then they'll try and spin it back and to 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 um, cancel out actual sightings. So the answer is that you know, AR, if you flash a laser at an ARV, they're not going to wave back. They don't flash back. You know, they, they, those are rare sightings to begin with. I saw a few of them floating. Uh, they're a picture in my book as well. Um, I saw a couple of the structures, the secret space program structures. I was awakened by my guides at 3 a.m. In, in, when I got back to, in the first year of JSETI, and I could see them, and I was able to take pictures of them. They were visibly large, enormous kind of triangles, kind of like that logo. But they weren't moving, and there was no feeling, and there was no energy coming from them. So I, you start to notice the difference, yeah. Um, let's play a little even, uh, let's play a better one here. Um, um, 
this is through an iPhone, but it is my Gen uh, 3 scope. Um, and you see there's uh, ships on the water here. Just uh, There's some lights in the background. Don't be distracted by those. <coughs> this huge light is right on the water. And it's going to start to fade out, you'll see. <coughs> um, this is one of our most amazing contact spots in all of Japan, in Okinawa. Even from the video, you could feel some energy coming out. You see that kind of power down? It's in a little cove. So, how, so when you say contact, are you saying you just see the ships and they, they make the blink and flash? Or uh -huh. you just meet them face to face? Um, it's, well, it starts with the ships and the sight of the course, and then it's at an energetic level, you know, and a consciousness level. But then, as you saw, they'll even they'll leave a, a, a photo, you know, of their face and stuff. They're in the field. So most people can't handle that right off the bat. There's no, there's too much programming, so they have to slowly approach, you know. So we're breaking, so you see the way that disappeared? It's just flat fading out like a candle or like a... Did you find that the military people They have re a little bit recently, just recently, yes. Uh, but it has not been that, it's been very, um, good. it's been very... That's part of the reason why I haven't released anything online, because it's been too good. It's been, it's been too good until now. Uh, yes, the, the, yep, um, the Japanese, uh, the, the Japan uh, Self-Defense Force does not operate at, at the middle of the night, so we've gotten confirmation from our source, uh, who was a wing cram commander in Naha here in Okinawa. Um, so it is all US, yes. Um, let's go. So I wonder at what point are they, the cabal, not going to realize that it's just, they can't stop it. <laughs> well, know? they know, yeah. It's like, why are they holding on, you know? But you yeah, shouldn't, no. we shouldn't spend any time thinking about that. We need to get connected to the ETs directly. That's what, I'm, that's what we're talking yeah. about here. You well, don't need to focus on that, that at all. Let, this one is, raw, this was a, is awesome. This was two, less than two months before the earthquake in Kumamoto, the one you saw on CNN in, uh, in April. This is just not far from where I live. This, we've been sent there three years in a, a row in the middle of the winter, and now we finally got it. Why? This is on the 33rd parallel that Scott uh, showed last night, and this is the major ground light phenomenon. Uh, at n first, the first, uh, first uh, field work we did was at 9 p.m., and the second at 1.30 a.m. And this is, um, you see all these lights on the ground. Uh, the contrast is a little bright on this screen, but uh, those are all coming from, this is the world's largest volcanic caldera. There's several light ships just going back and forth on the ground. They're all visible to the naked eye as well. Kumamoto in Kuchu, yes. Yeah, so not far from the um, epicenter. point is that this was not an earth man-made earthquake the, the the conspiracy buffs are they run out of cards they just play in the same song and repeat so um, especially uh, in, in Japan it, you know it's always an earth a man-made earthquake so um, that's not true and here's the proof the ATs were there they've been there for over five years um, this is the world's largest volcanic caldera there's another or Orion site here these are the Orions and um, so just by doing this, we're connecting it with them. And th this, this video and the earthquake thing shows you how much more. So it's, there's so many levels happening at the same time. There's the contact, and we're confirming the contact itself. But they've sent us in there for to be there for a specific mission. It's a grid work you know, at the same time. So uh, the more you do this, the more you realize um, how many layers there are to it going on. It's mind-boggling. And then it, um, it goes back, and they're at much closer range too. Like you saw in that first flare, they do these big power, power, um, say these big lights up, standing vertically. And then uh, the next day, we showed this to the uh, hotel staff. Um, a lot of the hotels we use actually look up my name, and they'll find what we're doing. Um, I usually tell them it's just a uh, an astronomical sky watch, but um, these guys are really interested. And the manager and the, the main staff guy were there, but they're, they're, they were told me like, there's no cars out there on the planes that, at that hour. And, and they immediately recognized, oh, that's, you know, that's no farming truck, you know. They were really excited. That hotel's now closed. Watch this. Look at this big power up. Enormous flare. So prime conditions um, uh, in Japan, in a way, with these ground lights. Um, 
And the nice thing is that you don't run into the trouble out there with that you do um, like Sea City's had with state parks and permits and the cops getting your, in your hair out here in the West. So um, you could go anywhere at any hour out there. It's just totally safe. So. Okay, keep moving on. Um, um, So um, this was a, a series, again, of this uh, ley line grid work that um, there was a, a few events as we've moved into 2015 and now this year, the amount of ET guided um, events has really increased. Um, so we're getting a le less, qual well, less quantity of events, but more quality, even from what it was before. And uh, this, these three sites um, uh, were all first for us. Um, the farthest one to the left is Nagasaki. We were there for the um, three times. The first one was a uh, meeting, and that was on 777, which is a uh, power number for ancestral clearing. And uh, we did a major clearing at the uh, atomic, the nuclear bomb site. And uh, um, in came the Aurora energy. So I think someone was mentioning on the first panel here, there's this new ascension frequency that's coming down in the rainbow colors. It's, it's uh, rewriting the elemental bodies. and. Um, uh, I confirmed it again with James at the ranch, but there was a major uh, clearing that day. And it was 777. Uh, July 7th is, is a Shinto holiday as well. Uh, and then uh, on um, the 70th anniversary of the bomb. Uh, so that was super powerful. And then we did a major contact event the next month in August. All three of these sites are on the ley line that shifted during that last earthquake. So um, it's like you turn around and you realize, oh, that's what that was for, you know, after the fact. Um, and here is another one. Um, in Washington, on our last tour of East City last year, um, uh, September 28th was the super blood moon. It was a super moon, and also it was the full moon lunar eclipse. One of our members came in, and um, James does this session where he uh, connects with the ET guides. And one of the members had a really rare first, there's been a lot of new uh, faces coming in from the ETs, and one of them is this beautiful being called Era. And if any of you are sensitive to that, just go ahead and use that name. It's, uh, it's like a Sophia figure, the Earth, it's like the Earth spirit, but for a planet in the Pleiades. Um, she's a seventh dimensional goddess. And um, so uh, during the ceremony, this was uh, Randy Kramer's workshop there, there was 50 per people in the circle. And um, we're good for time? Uh, Another five or 10? <laughs> soon, I okay. assume. Okay, I'm wrapping up with this, this is my last theme. Thank you. So okay. Much. Yeah, so uh, I asked the era, wh what star of the Pleiades are you closest to? And uh, James doesn't always go that far as far as detailed information, and um, the, my question was not answered. Um, uh, we got the word cluster, so hey, all the, the answer was that all the stars of the Pleiades kind of resonate together. And then I went back to um, Japan, and I was still vibing. This was an enormous um, download into the Stargate here at East City at uh, Mount Adams. And, uh, uh, and all these new energies from space are coming in and spreading out across the earth. Uh, I went back and was just resonating like this for three weeks until we had an event at a power site, another one of the three holy mountains called um, White Mountain. This is sort of the image I got of the, of the being, this white in white clothes. <laughs> and this is White Mountain, beautiful shot. So the, um, the, this is from a presentation I did on 420, a webinar I did. And the very day, a professor at a university in this area put up this gorgeous picture of the mountain in this Facebook feed. So um, just all these confirmations. And uh, then ERA came in at this event, which was three weeks after we got back from the US, and um, uh, immediately answered my question. Um, this vision came in, and I went into this really heavy breathing, and this energy dump just started happening. And she told me that she was nearest to the star called Atlas, which is the grandfather of the, the Pleiades, and that's the farthest one to the left. So she immediately showed me the, the vision of where she was located and everything. So that was just amazing. Um, and then we did, for the Kumamoto earthquake, we did um, a healing uh, event on Hitler's birthday, which is, again, like Scott was saying with the 6th, all these, we get, we get, we do overrides on these satanic dates. So 420 was Hitler's birthday. That's a big ritual day. And we did this webinar on that day. And um, the energies were came in again so to, to help heal that ley line around Japan. So um, yeah, amazing stuff. Um, Let me just see if I can uh, wrap up with that. Uh, Okay. No problem at all. Yeah, okay, so um, 
not uh, time just flies by. Uh, I again, please just so uh, if you have a second, I've got the um, uh, books and DVDs over there, a little mailing list uh, form, and I'll be sharing a lot more stuff this year. I'd like to recommend to everyone, uh, be, besides uh, James and uh, Dr. Rear, I'm Lisa Renee, Energetic Synthesis. And there's two people on YouTube here that I've been guided to. One of them by Dr. Moto Spirit, um, the guy in the bottom, John Newton. Phenomenal. This uh, here they have free videos online. Just listening to these free samples um, uh, is a, this amazing energy work that happens with uh, the ancestral clearing and things like that. So if you, I don't know if you want to take a picture of that or uh, I have a lot more videos, but we're out of time. So uh, yeah, um, my story again is in this book, Past to Contact. It's available on Amazon. I have a, a three copies with me here. And uh, if you have any other questions, I'll, I'll just be back there. Thanks for everyone. It was awesome. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Ted. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Portland tonight, so I won't be able to be here for the uh, you know uh, dinner and everything. So uh, but uh, hopefully we'll meet again somewhere. Thanks a lot. Yes, yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, I'll go back one more time to that slide here. Do it, yeah. Take that, take that picture. You're standing in the light. Oh. Go ahead and grab that one, then I'll show you the website once more. Yeah, we're going to do some webinars, so I'll, I'll broadcast from Japan in English, so you can see that. And uh, yeah, we're, we're hoping to do another have Ted back to Japan uh, at the end of this year, or we'll see, we'll see when we get the go sign, and then early next year. Yeah, thanks for all. Let's give a round of applause for Ted and what all he's doing too.